It's very interesting because now we can have, normally we do biometry with A mode, B mode, but in cases that there is a big eye, so staphyloma exterior or something, we can use B mode biometry, I can tell you that. Actually, cataract surgery is a refractive surgery. The patient wants to see everything. And we look for accuracy in the planned result. If the optic is correct, that the things you are planned must be <laughs> achieved, must be the goal. And you need to make a very keratometry, very accurate axial lens measurement. You want to know the lens constant. You can you must use the proper formula, and you can of, of course you must do a surgical producer producer very well. And the most important thing is to possible evaluation of the results. But sometimes this axial length measurement is very difficult in some cases. There are different methods to make the biometry. A mode biometry, you can do it automatic manual, contact or immersion. I recommend the immersion always. And you can do it B mode biometry. Not everyone makes it. It's very easy. If you can use a B mode for examination, you can use very easy it for biometry. Yeah? It could be a simple immersion, the vector C in the visual lecture. Or you can also use current spherometry, switch sorosity, or whatever you want. But it's easy if you have your B diagnostic method, it's very easy to combine in the environment. In the A mode, you have the direct the contact. You can immersion, solid immersion gel. And you can use the scleral cell as well. There are two immersions, one contact. Try to don't use the direct mode, I mean the contact mode, I will show you why. And you have the immersion with B mode. You, can, you also have the solid soil immersion gel, or you can also use the lateral shell in order to do the. Uh, if you have the lateral shell, good. If you don't have it, you can use your gel to do it. Be careful because the transducer, when they are sending the ultrasound beam, they have an area that they are disruptive beams that they are very in the middle and there is a very very extreme interference zone that in our biometrics probes are around 3.3 millimeters that every echo is a transition distance there is an interference if you try to measure in contact the first image that you have it's a wrong image. It's an image of interference. Let's see. When you made the con, when you made the contact net with the A mode, the first echo is this. You are into the interference zone. Then you can see the cornea. You can't. You cannot. There is no cornea here. You suppose the cornea is here, but it all depends if you are far of the cornea or you are pressing the cornea, or you are deforming the cornea, but you are not sure where is the cornea. And it's very important, the anterior chamber depth to estimate the position of the lens. And if you don't have the cornea, you can measure that. That is the reason that you need to use an immersion monitoring. Look. The echo, the first echo is the same echo that you got in the contact, but you are sure because there is water here that you get very precise and clear the echoes of the cornea in this way. Then it's very, very easy to know that this echo is an artifact and you should not be able to make the cornea measure or the anterior chamber measure in the contact mode. Look, 
if you compare this and this, they are quite similar. They are artifacts. And you suppose, in this case, that the cornea is inside. But you suppose, in this, in immersion, you are sure that the cornea is right here. And the anterior chamber there is this. And the lens is this. And the vitreous cavity is this. Then, don't use contact method because you are making a mistake. If you make an error for 1.1 millimeter in emetropic eyes, you get a refractive surprise. Class 7, 25 is nothing. But if you might make an error 1 millimeter, because you are not sure where is the cornea, you can get a post-refractive surprise 2.5 in an emetropic eyes. It is worse in hyperopic eyes. If you make an error 0.1, uh, 0.1 millimeter, you get a preoperative, postoperative error of 0.75 or three parts of a diopter. But if you make a one millimeter error, you can leave a disaster to 7.5 diopter postoperative. This is too much. Huh? And it could be caused because you are using not a good method to measure the biometry. Also, sometimes with A mode biometry, you are not sure if you are in the macula or if you are in the optic. It's very tricky. You must be able to recognize the echoes to see if you are located in the right place. There are different diameters in the eye, the axial and the medial. And what happens in an, an staphyloma posticum, a posterior high myopia? When you make A mode, you are not sure if you're getting this axial length, this axial length, and this one. And you don't know where's the macula. That's the reason you can use very well, very safe B mode ion especially in that subtle shape staphyloma look this is like a saddle <laughs> and what is there this is the, the rationale of this bibliometry it's based on vector c it's guided by a b mode horizontal axial scan there is no limitation in opaque media by optic uh, procedures and the posterior pole B mode you can make it simultaneously as if you're doing your your biometry. This is very advantage. Again, patient is supine, position eyelids open, local anesthetic, a target point in the ceiling, it help the patient to keep a steady gaze using the other eye, the control lateral eye, and then you can use both you can be pro using the scleral shell like i always do but you can also use direct with a lot of gel i prefer to do with this scleral shell. for me it's easy if you can do on a speculum you can do it if you can do gonioscopy you can do it if you can touch the eye which is without any problem this is if if you can put a speculum in your eye, you can do it without any problem. And look, this is designed to be fixed by the uh, um, by, by by itself, and you avoid the corneal indentation and also the corneal abrasion. Okay, marker the probe is positioned to the right or left. I prefer, this is not my case, but I prefer always to point the center of the cornea in order to obtain an horizontal end. I try to do it, if I put this, uh, this way, and I'm, I'm uh, the, the, the prof, the temporal part of the eye should be in the part and the, and the, nasal part of the eye down and the macula should be here what happens the measure techniques are 
the following. You must see clearly the anterior and posterior. Let this, if you my, my, my arrow, you can see the anterior and posterior. You can see the anterior and posterior lens interfaces. Then you see the optic nerve here. They are the three lens marked for B mode biometry. Then they should be aligned with the highest, the more brilliant echoes. Look, these are very brilliant. They are very brilliant also and an enhanced signal. And that means this is the right place. First, you superimpose C vector over the horizontal axis scan pointing the optic nerve, and then you move it, uh, the vector C, 10 to 15 degrees or 3 millimeter, 3,5 millimeters, in order to go direct to the macula. You localize the macula just when you localize the optic nerve. And the, you know this part is the temporal part of the eye. So easy. And if you have the external rexus insertion, everything is exactly located just to, to look where is the macula in that case. It's very, very easy. And then try to move to be perpendicular. How do you know you are perpendicular? All the surface are very very high reflective that means you are doing a perpendicular uh, approach to the eye okay if you make this huh? every interface face is shown and the e bolt and the vector mode and look you are facing and you're crossing these interfaces in the brightest part yeah? and the reflection of the echo show you the anterior and posterior cornea, the anterior surface of the lens, the posterior surface, and the macula. And you are sure that you are making this measure exactly in the macula. You must perform a series of five measurements, selecting the values with a standard deviation less than 0 0.05 millimeter. Look what happened in this case. You can could do, perform very well in myopia. This is a 25, 48 millimeter uh, axon lane eye. And hyperopia, this is a 22.16 millimeters without any problems. And you are sure if you made uh, the position opposite, you can see You must be sure that this is temporal. Yeah? And also you can make it very easy with the remote. Be careful. Be careful because the device make it automatically, and the key point of V mode is to identify if this mark in the in the correct position yeah, in the posterior lens capsule. In this case, it was automatically uh, selected as the point, but it was not the capsule; it was the nucleus. And look, you can see that the axial length is 2244. And this is the correct, this is the same image, but we choose in this case, not this image, we should this peak. It's correlated exactly with the posterior surface lens. And this is the real axial length. You are sure that the both peaks, they belong to the anterior and posterior cornea, this to the anterior surface of the lens, this for the posterior surface of the lens, and in between there is the the nucleus uh, distances, but it's not it doesn't matter to our examination. You must choose the right interface, and then you can choose the retina in the way. And you, if you are making this measure is correct, please. May be mode biometry with eyelids open to distinguish the front of the cornea. If the eyelids are closed, it's not possible to precisely identify the cornea, and you are making the same mistake that you made with contact A mode biometry.
Okay, again, the advantage of the country is because every every intraocular segment has his own velocity. This is aqueous water, this is the crystalline lens, this is a protein, and this is vitreous, it's like water. The velocity of ultrasound is different. Then please do not use an average like this. In the first case, the axial length was 2262 with two one here and then an ultrasound speed uh, marked at 1550 meters. This is the, the, the average. Don't use the average. Use this. This is the B mode biometry using four calipers, and the ultras, ultrasound speed is independent in every segment of the eye, and this is more precise. Okay, let's go. Again, emerge. All the reflective load the optic nerve loop the macula. This is very easy. I encourage you to make it the next time with gel or with uh, scleral shell. Try to if you have the aviso, this is the machine that I have, or the absolute, this is the new machine also that I have, or the or the um, um compact touch, you can do it because all those machines they allow you to examination. What happened in the very, very myopia? Oh, look at this. This is a video in real time. I move the C vector and I look the optic nerve. It's too near to the optic nerve. I go a little bit down and I'll be sure I just three millimeters, three, five millimeters, ten millimeters or whatever, and I'm sure that the macula is there. Okay? I change from B mode to A mode with a bottom uh, you have a bottom in the machine. Then I have the cornea, the anterior surface of the lens, the posterior surface, the retina, and the sclera. And I'm sure I'm doing again exactly in the macula my measure. Then I click another bottom and I get the number of this. This is an eye for 28.51 millimeters accent length. In every situation, this is the the, ante, the anterior chamber, the lens, the vitreous, and the total is, is correctly measured in the correct velocity. Uh, the cornea, the anterior chamber, the lens, and the vitreous with the correct. If you have if a silicone oil tamponade, you must change it. Let's see what happened in a silicone oil. This is a normal line again. Look, this is the optic nerve. I try to make the position exactly. Three millimeters, three five millimeters, ten degrees to fifty degrees. I am sure that this is the macula, hmm? and I that I'm very perpendicular because cornea, anterior surface of the lens and posterior surface are very brilliant, and I got the echoes down and downside. Again, twenty-eight fifty-one in the second measure. I'm sure what happened in silicone oil tamponade. A, tamponade A, it should be look bigger or longer than the normal eye. And we must change this vitreous velocity A with I have to we will change to 980 meters per second because this is the velocity of the ultrasound passing through the silicon oil. If we the correction we have we have the exactly measure of these eyes of silicon oil at the same time because we are we are using the v mode we can detect look we can we can look every pathology every possible pathology we can look here yellow cyst asteroids we can see a retinal detachment we can see here attractional in diabetics. We can see another traction. We can see here in escleritis and retinal schism. And we can see here a retinal traction. Then the advantage to use the B mode biometry is simultaneously you, can, you are doing B mode and biometry 
and you can the in the posture report as we saw in the uh, in the previous presentation also we can see what happened in the optic nerve it's a gruesome in the optic nerve it's a edema in the optic nerve and so if there is a excavation in glaucoma excavation or a coloboma in this eye it's advantage to use the b-mode making the biometry because we have one method, one one method to geometry and pathology. And the 10 megahertz and the 20 megahertz, you can also rule out with the 20 the macular hole. You can see very well with OCT, but if you have you are unable to see the image. Also, a choroidal uh, central choroidal retinal seropathy center and the advantage of the vmo biometry is that integrate the average of immersion and a scan in the bs and overcome the weakness of the two methods after to identify the axis on an actual two-dimensional b scan and you don't have any corneal you don't you have any corneal indentation a real measurement of the anterior chamber depth you must be aware to make a clear differentiation of anterior capsule peak and echo is when you the sound a scan does not pass right to the center of the pupil if you are making b mode it's, it's very easy and you have a better opinion of the length thickness of the and the posterior capsule the advantage are the evaluation of which retina especially in dense cataracts see retinal detachment, vitreous opacities, clear assessment of macular region, especially in age-related macular degeneration. You have a better localized location of viola in high myop eyes with stapiloma. This is a very, very repro reproducible method that reduces the risk of significant error in the calculation of the power of intracular lens. This is the biometry i encourage you to do that okay we are again with 20 minutes or so more or less that in in this case i ask neil if you have any comments or questions 